There are some who believe the book of Enoch is a lost book of the Bible that was mistakenly not included with the rest of the collected inspired books. This is mainly perpetuated because the Bible mentions some verses that are found in the book of Enoch, specifically Jude chapter 1 verses 14 through 15, which says, And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. However, the reason this scripture was included in the Bible is because it is true and inspired, not necessarily because the book of Enoch as a whole is true and inspired. And I'll get more into that in this video as I present to you 10 facts about the book of Enoch you probably didn't know. But before I do that, make sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the notifications icon next to the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Now for the facts. Fact number one. The book of Enoch mentions Noah. Enoch chapter 10 verses 1 through 3 mentions Noah even though the Bible teaches that Enoch was taken up to heaven years before Noah was born. It says, Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One spake, and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech, and said unto him, Go to Noah, and tell him in my name, Hide thyself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed, and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on it. The Bible never states that Enoch returned to earth after he was translated to heaven. So if the book of Enoch was written by him, how could he have known about Noah and the flood? Fact number two, Azazel is blamed for all evil. In the book of Enoch chapter 10 verses 8 through 9, God places all the blame for the corruption on earth on a demon named Azazel. It says, And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Azazel to him ascribe all sin. The Bible doesn't mention any other demon besides Lucifer, also known as Satan or the devil. Not to say there aren't any other demons, there are, but they're just never named. And Satan is the one who is ultimately blamed for the evils of our world, because he is the originator of sin. Jesus said in 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Fact number three, demons repented of their sins. The book of Enoch, chapter 13, verses 5 through 6, implies that the fallen angels are repentant, stating, For from thenceforward they could not speak with him, meaning God, nor lift up their eyes to heaven for shame of their sins, for which they had been condemned. Then I wrote out their petition, and the prayer in regard to their spirits, and their deeds individually, and in regard to their requests, that they should have forgiveness and length. The Bible indicates the opposite because it says the fate of Satan and his angels is hellfire in Matthew chapter 25 verse 41, stating, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Since the devil and his angels are consigned to hellfire, that indicates they are unwilling to repent because everyone who repents from their sins is promised deliverance from destruction and hell. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Fact number four. Demons no longer have contact with God. Not only does the last verse which I read from the book of Enoch claim that demons repented, it also states that demons were no longer able to have contact with God after their initial rebellion, stating that they were unable to speak with God or lift up their eyes to heaven. But in Job chapter 1, Satan was able to come directly before God in heaven and speak to him about Job and his fidelity. Just to give you an excerpt of their conversation, verses 6 through 9 reads, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? 
Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Fact number five. Heaven is described differently. The book of Enoch gives a description of God and heaven that is completely unbiblical. The Bible in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 21 describes the ground in the city of heaven as being made of gold. It says, The street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. The book of Enoch chapter 14 verse 10 says, Its groundwork was of crystal. This is just one example of the many contradictions the book of Enoch gives in its description of heaven compared to the Bible. There are many more contained in the book of Enoch, chapters 14 verses 9 through 25. I'm not going to list them all, but feel free to read it for yourself. I'll leave a link in the video description to the book of Enoch online. Fact number six, angels cannot enter into God's presence. The book of Enoch chapter 14 verses 21 through 22 says that none of the holy angels could come before the presence of God and see him, stating, none of the angels could enter and could behold his face by reason of the magnificence and glory. Yet Jesus, in speaking of little children, said the exact opposite in Matthew chapter 18 verse 10, stating, Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Fact number seven, angels married women. In the book of Enoch chapters 10 and 12, it speaks of the watchers, which were heavenly angels who came down to earth, married women, and had children with them. The world then became corrupted by their evil works, and God sent the flood. However, this is unbiblical because in Matthew chapter 22 verse 30, in speaking about those who would be raised from the dead at Jesus' second coming, Jesus said, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Therefore, angels do not marry. I've actually even spoken to Christians who believe that this is what Genesis chapter 6 teaches when it talks about the sons of God marrying the daughters of men. But that is a complete misinterpretation of Scripture. The sons of God represent the followers of God who were the descendants of Seth. And the daughters of men represent worldly women who were the descendants of Cain. Their union brought corruption to the world because it compromised the faith of the followers of God. That's usually what happens when a Christian decides to marry someone who is not a believer. Instead of converting their spouse to God, their spouse converts them back to the world. And that's why the Bible discourages marriage with unbelievers. By the way, I have a video which goes more into detail about Genesis chapter 6 and the Nephilim entitled Seven Facts About the Nephilim You're Not Being Told. I'll leave a card to it in the upper right hand corner of the screen which you can click on to watch. Fact number eight, angels are bound in heaven. In the book of Enoch chapter 21, it says there is a desolate place in heaven where angels are bound for eternity. Verses nine through 10 state, then Uriel answered me, one of the holy angels who was with me, and said unto me, Enoch, why hast thou such fear and affright? And I answered, Because of this fearful place, and because of the spectacle of the pain. And he said unto me, This place is the prison of the angels, and here they will be imprisoned forever. This totally contradicts scripture. The Bible states that one-third of the heavenly angels were cast out of heaven with Satan for siding with him in his rebellion in Revelation chapter 12 verses 3, 4, and 9. And the Bible never states that there are fallen angels bound in heaven in a place of despair. Not to mention the Bible says that the fate of Satan and his angels is destruction in the lake of fire in Matthew chapter 25 verse 41, which will burn on earth. Revelation chapter 20 verses 7 through 10 says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations, which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breath of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, 
where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Notice that this fire rains down from heaven onto earth, ultimately becoming a lake of fire to destroy Satan and his followers. Fact number 9. Souls are reserved in heaven. The book of Enoch chapter 22 verses 1 through 2 speaks of a place in heaven made of rock with deep hollow places. Verses 3 through 4 reads, Then Raphael answered, one of the holy angels who was with me, and said unto me, These hollow places have been created for this very purpose, that the spirits of the souls of the dead should assemble therein. Yea, that all the souls of the children of men should assemble here. The Bible makes it clear that the dead are unconscious in the grave. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verses 5 through 6 states, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. It won't be until the second coming of Jesus Christ that the dead are raised from the grave to be taken to heaven. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 through 17 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Fact number 10. There are many scientific contradictions in the book of Enoch. There are many astronomical and meteorological contradictions in the book of Enoch, which defy both the Bible and modern scientific facts. For example, the book of Enoch chapter 33 verses 1 through 4 states that Enoch mapped and counted all the stars in the sky. However, Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 22 says the stars cannot be numbered. It's a physical impossibility because there are so many of them. Astronomers estimate there are about 100,000 million stars in the Milky Way alone. Besides that, there are millions upon millions of other galaxies. Also, in the book of Enoch chapter 41, the winds, snow, hail, and moon all come of a wooden receptacle in heaven. This is ridiculous, unscientific, and unbiblical. By now you may be starting to see why the book of Enoch was not included in the Bible. It contradicts the Bible numerous times. The book of Enoch actually falls into a category of writings called the pseudopigrapha. That means that the author is not who it claims to be. And that makes sense because the book of Enoch speaks about Noah and the Bible indicates that Enoch was taken to heaven before Noah's time. So it's much more likely that the book of Enoch was written by someone else at a later date who falsely claimed that Enoch was the original author. Therefore, the book of Enoch doesn't have much value for Christians who are trying to learn gospel truths. But one of the reasons Jude may have quoted from it is because it was well known at the time and the passage he quoted contained some inspirational truth and it helped strengthen his case for the gospel. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like it and share it. If you like my t-shirt and want to get one of your own, I'll include a link to it in the description box. Please pray for my channel that God will continue using it to reach people for Christ and check out some more of my videos by clicking on the screen. I have a lot of good Christian videos which I'm sure you'll enjoy if you liked this one. God bless you.